Your Creative Push just celebrated its one-year anniversary. To help the show going into its second year, you can fill out a brief survey by going to yourcreativepush.com slash survey. It only takes five minutes, and your opinions and comments will help to make the show better serve you moving forward. Again, that's yourcreativepush.com slash survey, and thank you so much for your time. Hey everybody, Youngman Brown here. Just wanted to let you know that today's episode features some explicit language. I know that shouldn't come as a surprise to you, but in some of the surveys that are coming in, which I really appreciate by the way, some people mention that they would like to see some less cursing. And while I don't know if I'm able to control myself in that way, <laughs> um, this episode actually features a lot of cursing. Uh, it's actually kind of a theme of the episode, so I just wanted to come on and let you know that before the episode in case there's any young ears around or in case you weren't interested in listening. Uh, but that's about it, so enjoy the show. Ear Creative Push, episode 191. Don't think about no. I was like, no, I'm just closing this door. Every time that you say no, you're saying yes to something else. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Victor Mascara. Victor is a concept artist working in the entertainment industry. He currently works at Ubisoft Toronto, and his list of clients include companies such as Universal Music, Tor Books, Orbit Books, Volta, and One Pixel Brush. Uh, and Victor, thank you, man, for coming on the show today. I was wondering if we could start out by uh, kind of you telling us how you got to the point you are today in your uh, artistic and creative career. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been kind of like a weird, like long story. Like pretty much, I'm I'm from from Bogota, Colombia. Mm-hmm. I started like drawing, you know, like same thing. Like since I was a little kid, and like. I used to go to school and like just draw in the back of my math notebook instead of like paying attention to the class and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I actually studying uh, visual arts here in, in Colombia, but I wasn't taking it too seriously to be honest because I didn't I didn't know I just knew that I wanted to draw and paint for a living. But to be honest, like Colombia is not a, a country that you can actually do that at least like the way that you want to do it. You know, like. Uh, maybe you can work in like an advertisement here. If you're really lucky, you can be like a like an art teacher. Maybe it's, it's really really hard to get a job here, uh, like doing what I do. So I didn't really know, like, knew how to actually like like get a job. You know, like actually like make money doing the stuff that I like. So I, I at some point I was just like, okay, I don't care, fuck it. Uh, I'm just gonna like sit down and like work my ass off to like actually like get really really good. Just because I like it, mm-hmm. like I, I, at some point I was just like I made my mind and I was like I'm not gonna get a job doing this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna do this just because I like it, and then I'm just gonna get a job in like a I don't know whatever like a restaurant or like whatever. And then pretty much I went to uh, I went to this university for a couple of years and I was just trying to like figure out and I was trying a bunch of stuff like photography. I was doing uh, like print making, etching, a bunch of stuff. And then at some point I was just like really tired of it. I was like, I wasn't learning much. The only, the only really good thing that I was like really enjoying it and it was actually like making me better uh, was a life drawing class and a life painting class with this guy, uh, Nicolas Uribe. I don't know if you have heard of him. He's no. really, he's awesome, dude. He's really, really awesome. Oh, cool. He, yeah, he's huge like online and everything. He's massive. And I was like really lucky that he was teaching in that university in this period of time, you know? Uh, so I pretty much just went to all his classes like every day as much as I can and started like learning from him. Uh, and then at some point that just dropped out of uh, university. And I was like really scared because like I spent like a bunch of years trying to like, you know, like get a degree. So it's easier for me to get a job in whatever it is. But at some point I was just, I just, I was just done with it. I was like, I'm not, I'm not saying that it was bad. I'm just saying that it wasn't what I wanted, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just pretty much literally just locked myself in a, in my room, in my house for like, I don't know, a year or something like that. And I just paint day in and night out, like every single day, pretty much all day. And then I started like learning from a bunch of people online. And then it literally like everything happened like really like in a very organic way, you know, because I, I started posting what I was learning uh, on Facebook mainly. And then through Facebook, I started meeting these people, like these really awesome people that they're killing it right now. Uh, but it was like, it was actually like a really nice uh, time, you know, because like I was like learning with them at the same time. 
and then we were all kind of like helping each other, uh, giving like freelance jobs to each other. If, if like if I can take anything, I was like, hey man, like can you take this for me? It was like a really like cool group of friends, you know. And then just from like social media and like Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of stuff, I I started I started just working. Like I I I, I remember like just after I dropped out of um, of college. I, you know, like I just put up like a, like a really shitty portfolio with like, I don't know, like five images, and like a really sketchy website and everything. And I, I started sending that to everybody. Like I was just like aiming like super high. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to send it to like Lucasfilm and like Naughty Dog and a bunch of like really awesome companies. Uh, and of course, like nothing happened. So I was just like, okay, like, fuck it. I'm just going to keep like working harder to like really get better. Uh, and then I was lucky enough that uh, a company, a guy, he started like a video game, like a small, like a mobile company, like a mobile game company here in Colombia. And he actually hired me six months after I dropped from, uh, from university. You know, I was like, Mark, uh, I can't believe it because like that, that's something that never happens in Colombia, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I pretty much worked there for a year. Uh, and then I felt like, like that was it. Like, like it was a really good experience. I saved a bunch of money. I learned how to work in a team. Uh, I got used to like, you know, like the nine to five kind of thing. And, uh, at some point I was like, okay, I'm actually making way more money freelancing because at that point I started to get like noticed by, you know, like people from like the States or Canada or something like that. Uh, so I quit my job and then I just became like a full-time freelancer for, I think it was like two years before I got hired, uh, in Ubisoft. Uh, but it was, it was a really good time. Like I was just like chilling here in Colombia. And I was I was working for uh, for Volta in Quebec. I was working for uh, One Pixel Brush. Uh, I was doing book covers. I was doing uh, like album covers for like DJs and musicians and that kind of stuff. And it was awesome, dude, because like Colombia is like a really cheap country if you like if your if your main income is in dollars, you know, like US dollars. I was very comfortable. And then at some point. Uh, I started talking to a friend in Ubisoft and he told me that they were looking for a concept artist. He referred me to his art director. And then at the same time, it was like a really good time for me because I was like super active in social media. So I guess like everything happening like at the same time and they really wanted me to be there for a project. So, uh, yeah, like everything happened like super quick actually, actually like to be honest with you, I was like super like pessimism, like. When I was doing the interview, because at the time, my English was really, really bad. Like, I have an accent now, but I'm okay now. But at the time, oh, dude, you have no idea. It was, like, <laughs> the worst, like, the worst English ever. So I was, like, doing the interviews by phone, and I was, like, super nervous, and I was, like, trying to, like, actually understand the guy and, like, thinking the answers. It was horrible, man. To be honest, I was, like, okay, I'm not going to get hired. Like, there's no, just no fucking way. And then... Like they actually like my stuff. They were like, yeah, like you, you're a cool guy. You can improve your English, but like, you, you don't sound like an asshole and we like your stuff. So like, if you want, you can apply for, for the visa in Colombia and then we would love to have you here. And I'm like, hell yeah. So I applied for the visa here and then like literally like in 20 days, I was like out of the country. Like I told my, I told my friends and my family like three days before leaving Colombia, I was like, hey guys, I think I'm leaving like Colombia for good. Like I'm going to leave in Canada. And they're like, what? <laughs> peace out yeah I was like okay guys I'll see you later man um, and then I I arrived to Canada I arrived in Canada uh, in Toronto and, and yeah like I, I've been there until until now like it's an amazing place uh, he's an amazing company I love the studio to be honest I was kind of like worried because you, like, you're going to a different country you're going to work in a huge studio you don't know how the people is in the country you don't know anything I, I actually have no idea like anything about Canada. i never been there before. Uh, I didn't speak the language. So I was like, okay. Like, it, it, like for me, it was just kind of like an adventure. I was like, okay, I want to see what I can do with this, you know? So I went there, arrived there, uh, spent a couple of days just like getting used to the city, trying to like talk to everybody in the street to kind of like practice my, my really shitty English. Mm. And, and that's it. Like, like literally like getting, getting used to the company and like, uh, getting used to like the way they work and everything was like super easy. Every, everybody there is super nice. The art directors are amazing. The people are amazing. And the culture the studio are amazing. It's like a very like everything's pretty smooth, it's pretty laid back. Uh, I love it too. Like it's, it's, it's been a, uh, an amazing experience. 
yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. And I, that, that's the other thing is like I, I also have like a, like a good chill, like, chance to like work in like pretty big games that I'm like really, really proud of, you know? Absolutely. And, and that all that started with, you know, your kind of fuck it mentality, which, which I like. It's kind of a theme through, through that story, you know, just saying, well, whatever, this is what I want. So I'm going to go for it. And I think one of the, the, the best parts of that story was, you know, as you're kind of teaching yourself, uh, and finding that tribe online to find those people that can, that can help you and that you can help them. Uh, it's so important. And the only way to kind of find that tribe to find those people to help you along the way is to, put yourself out there uh even if you do have like you said uh, uh, well i'm sure it was great but a shitty portfolio of you know just five <laughs> images just just getting your best work out there and then continuing you know to learn and to to put yourself out there oh dude for sure like i i, I like up to this point i think i i did my portfolio like i don't know like 50 times you know it's like i remember like i first started doing like digital art and i pulled like 10 images and then i i improved a little bit and then i like those 10 images i completely scrapped that like I just threw it out and I just right. put new images. And I did that for months until actually like, people started noticing my stuff. But oh yeah, like, like since I started painting, I was like like putting like a really like shitty website online with like the crappiest like images ever. But like <laughs> the important thing is like to like start doing it, you know? It's like once you're just doing it, you, you can learn from your mistakes and you can actually like improve on top of that. But like if, if, like one big mistake for me to be honest is like I was like terrified before that. I was terrified because I, I was I was spending time on like I think at the time it was conceptart.org. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing people. They're like ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, that, it was like a. I just realized that I was like, okay, like you can actually like improve with this. You know, it's like anything in life. But that was like the first time that actually like clicked for me. I was like, okay, this is something that you can actually learn and become better at it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all along the way, kind of finding new opportunities too that, that come up. Like you, you mentioned album art. That's actually how I found you because Seven Lions is my favorite, uh, musician. No, no way, <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> just insane. Yeah. And I was looking at his cover art and it looked, uh, a couple of them looked similar. And I was like, oh, I got to find, find out who this artist is. And that, that's how I found you actually. So that's you awesome. never know, you never know kind of who's looking at what. And the more uh, times you can put yourself out there, the better. Oh, dude, it's actually funny because I actually started working with Jeff because, like, years ago, like, when he, like, he used to be, he released a song from, uh, through, I think it was, like, Skrillex, uh, label, but it was, like, a really, like, that was, like, years ago, man, and I heard the song, and I was, like, that's awesome. So I Which song was, like, was it? Do you remember? I, I don't remember, man. I, I have to, like, I think it's one called Fractals, to be honest. Fractals, I know, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. So I heard uh-huh. that song, and I was, like, this guy is dope. So yeah. I actually, like... <laughs> I actually like painted something like listening to like that album and I painted something like, like inspired by the, you know, like the music and the cover. And he, he loves like, like spaceships and like esoteric stuff and that kind of, you know, like, you know, like his taste kind of thing. Yeah. And I painted something and I sent it to him. Actually, I think I, I put it on Instagram and I was like, Oh, I was listening to this guy's new album and I fucking love it. And then the guy, the guy actually like wrote, wrote me back and he's like, dude, this is awesome. I'm like, can I use it? I'm like, fuck yeah dude like please oh, and so then cool. and then after that i was like okay like that was it like that was that was like a one-time thing mm-hmm. and then he he started he wrote to me like a year after that probably and he's like hey man i'm I'm actually like thinking about releasing a, a new ep uh, and i would love to like have you doing the art for him like dude yes please like please like this has to happen no matter what right and then and then like he loved it I love working with him. And then from there, we started like doing like different stuff, like tour images, uh, stuff for his Instagram, um, new EP covers. I, I mostly did the, the remixes, you know, like the remixes of like a different song or something like that. But it's, it's been awesome. I love working with Jeff. He's the best. That's so cool. Um, how you, how you mentioned like that you were inspired by the music. He, he actually inspired me. I, I have this thing called words plus music where I write, um, like I make music videos using writing. It's really hard to explain, but, uh, he was one of like the influences for that too. Cause I would always, you know, I would listen to music while I would write and it would inspire me to write all these like crazy stories. And, and, uh, huh. I was just like, Oh, it would be really cool if I could actually tell the story with the song. So he was actually an inspiration to me too, to, That's uh, awesome, to start that man. whole thing. So yeah, Jeff's awesome. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's the best man. He's the best. And he's a, he's a sweetheart dude. He's the best. Yeah. 
His music's great for anybody that we'll link it in the show notes page as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, speaking of your style then, um, it, you do have a very, very unique style. Has that always been kind of, um, at the heart of your art? Like, has it always kind of been like that? Or is that something that developed over, um, over time? Dude, you know, like, I, I think for me, that's like a weird thing to like talk about because I feel that, I feel that there's, there's a bunch of people that you can go to, like, you go to his Instagram or to his website and you know what you're going to get. And I feel that just, like, just recently, I, kind of got that i think i think style is, is something that that you, you don't kind of choose it's something like is it, for me like i think about it as something that comes after painting and drawing uh for years and then you actually like in your head you know like you think about what you really like what really makes you like interested in art what are your inspirations, what priorities, all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't think that you choose a style. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like, like, like a reflection of like actually like who you see life and how you see your work and it just kind of happens organically. Because I hear a bunch of people like talking about like, oh man, like, like how do I get a style? How do I do? It's like the best way how to get a style is just like paint for like, I don't know, like years. And then at some point it's going to click. It's, like, it's going to start clicking slowly, but it's going to click at some point and it's going to be something that you do it because you you truly believe in that you know it's like if you if the people do that do amazing like life drawings it's because they're actually like inspired by that my inspiration has been it's been like music it's been uh like movies it's been graphic design and for the longest time like i remember when i when i started doing um you know like getting jobs like years ago like before ubisoft before freelancing like in the very early stages I was just inspired by concept art, which is like, you know, like big guys with guns and like soldiers <laughs> and like Halo looking shit and like ships and alien planets. And I, I, I love that. I, 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 I really love it. But through the years, I, I'm, I'm really like, since I was a little kid, I'm, I'm interested in a bunch of different stuff and I changed taste really fast. And I don't think it's like, it sounds, it could be like a bad thing. But I don't know, it also keeps me like, you know, like fresh and like interested in like actually like painting, you know? So for me, it's like the thing that I'm doing right now is completely different than the stuff that I was doing way before. And it's been, it's been fun, but at the same time, it's been, it's been kind of hard because like, you know, like people used to know me, but for like, again, like space scenes and like mm-hmm. sci fi stuff and everything. And right now I'm, 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 I'm really like just painting like, just crazy stuff really like just like weird stuff that actually like melting faces <laughs> yeah yeah dude it's like it's, it's actually, actually weird it's like for example like the new stuff that i'm doing right now uh i talked to a friend the other day like a, a, a guy here in colombia like i haven't seen him forever and he's like dude like are you okay and i'm like why it's like he's, yeah he's like you're painting like the weirdest shit i'm like i well i, I guess but like it's just it's just me kind of like channeling like my taste in music and my taste in like graphic design uh like classic illustrators a bunch of stuff and it's funny because like sometimes i was talking to a friend of mine there's a piece that i did that is like a it's just like a weird face with like a candy like a, like, a, like the inside of the head is like a candy thing it's just weird it's like a weird blue head thing and i actually painted it because i had a headache <laughs> and i was like i just i wonder how a headache would look like you know what i mean right so it's just like like weird stuff, but it's like it's, it's the kind of stuff that I I need to do right now because I do freelance and I do I mean I I work every day at the studio and it's it's concept art looking you know images and then if I freelance sometimes I I might do like a book cover or an album cover and they usually like my more like the concept art looking style that I used to have you know mm-hmm. uh so for me this is like detox. For me, this is just like, I'm just not bored, but, but kind of, yeah, like I'm just like, like very comfortable doing this kind of stuff and I'm doing it all the time and I'm doing it for money. And that for me, that's like one thing that is like, I, I just want to do something just for fun. Like I need to, you know? Yeah. It's necessary to get back to the, like the, the fun of it. And, uh, oh, yeah. and when you do have that, that, that kind of time to do the things that are like in your, in your head, that the things that are kind of out there and weird i think it is important to again as we said before to kind of have that fuck it mentality you know where it's just like well i'm who cares what people think i'm gonna do uh, whatever weird idea is in my head and, and just put it out there 
No, oh, yeah, fuck it, dude. Like, like for me, it's like I remember when when I used to be like super like involved with like like the concept art community, and I used to post like tutorials on how to do like photo bashing and like like alien looking dudes and that kind of stuff. I used to have actually like like a more like a bigger response on like social media and that kind of stuff. But then at some point, I'm like, okay, like I I really don't care, and I have like people like. Like sending me messages and he's like, Hey man, are you gonna do like a, like, I miss your sci fi dudes and like your sci fi scenes? I'm like, I'm like, dude, there's, there's like a million people, especially these days. Like when I started, it wasn't that big. Like now you can go to like our station and like everybody's doing like the same thing. Like I love the website and I, I, I do love that people is actually like more interested in art and everything. But to be honest, I'm like, I'm just like a little bit jaded of like looking through the same images over and over, you know? Absolutely. That's another important reason why you just got to do what's the crazy ideas that are in your head because they're mo- more than likely going to be more unique. If you're just doing what everybody else is doing or, or what you've been doing like all your life, you know, there's no progress there. There's no kind of progression. Yeah, there's nothing. And, and that's the other thing is like at some point you, you kind of get like comfortable to like you start the images the same way that you always do. You always paint the same like subject. You always use the same colors, the same whatever, you know, like you, you, you get like a formula in your head and that's good for like professional work because you have to go every day from like nine to five and you have to deliver, you know, like you have to get the job done. But like for fun, like for life, like I, I just need to do, I just need to do like weird stuff. I even do like, I've been doing like a bunch of stuff. I've been doing like line drawings, which is like, I'm really not comfortable doing that. So I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to do line, line drawing. I used to, uh, I, I even started learning music. Like I, I used to do music even before I started painting. I used to play like, like metal in like high school bands and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And even like recently, like a year ago, I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to learn, um, Ableton just for fun and like just fuck around with it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, just like learning different stuff. And at some point, like, dude, like at some point, everything comes together. Like there's people that say that, that, you know, it's like, it's being like a jack of all trades, but then you don't master anything, something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you can, you can use anything. Like, like I, I used, I started learning, uh, animation too. And I remember like, I, I did like an animation clip and it's literally like 30 seconds. Like it's nothing. And it's like the simplest animation ever. And then instead of like calling somebody or like, like finding somebody to do the sound for it, like the sound effects and like the sound editing for the animation. I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm not a DJ, but I know how to use Ableton like in a very basic way. So I, I'm, I'm able to do my own sound effects and, like, and I'm able to edit my own video and I'm able to do everything on my own. And that's for me, that's in, like, that's so just, just so powerful. You know, it's like, I love to work with people, but the more you get done, I think it's more, it's more honest to who you are, you know? Yeah, like you said, the jack of all trades thing and, and mastering none. Uh, it it's fun to to play around, you know, to mess around without those expectations. It's not like you're you're starting something new to become a professional musician or to become a professional DJ or to become exactly. a professional animator. But like you said, there is so much power in in kind of getting that knowledge, especially in today's world where it's all free. You know, you can literally Google the exact question that you want or, or put it on YouTube and somebody's probably going to be answering that question and, and walking oh, yeah. you through it. When you do that, like you might get new ideas for, for something and be like, oh, yeah. oh I, I had no idea that this could be done. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Like, maybe you com- can do it too. Completely do. And actually, you know, it's funny because uh, I remember uh, there was a point that I was like really, like really tired of like just just painting in general. And I think that happens to like everybody that paints or like does music or does something creative, you know, like at some point you dab yourself, or you get bored of what you're doing or, you know, like just stuff like that. And I remember at some point I was like a year and a half ago, I was just bored. I was just like, like I'm doing my, my job, but I, I'm, I'm just not inspired to paint anything or like draw anything. And that's when I started to learn music. But at the same time, it's like, I remember like everything happens like, like weird. I, I did like some tracks and I was like, I was like having fun with it. And I was like, okay, this is cool. But then I, I need a cover for my music. And then I started painting like weird stuff. And that's the time when I actually started doing the stuff that I'm doing right now. I was like, okay, awesome. I'm just going to do like weird <laughs> shit, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You, n- you never know like the path that you're going to go down. Yeah. And, and even, okay. So and, and everything kind of like comes full circle, full circle at some time because like I did, I did that and then I did the animation piece that I'm telling you, which is like 30 seconds of like the, the stupidest, whatever, like, like the simplest animation. 
and mm-hmm. I did I did that clip and I did the sound for it. And then through that and through a friend, I don't know if you know him, uh, Ross, uh, Ross Tran. He's a, he's a, re- he's an awesome, uh, illustrator. He's a YouTuber as well. He's, he's really awesome. He can, he showed a friend of his my animation clip and his friend's a DJ and he's actually doing like pretty good. And he, he loved it. He's like, Hey man, I'm, I'm about to go on tour or I'm about to start like a tour like somewhere in like next time or something like that. And I would really love to have, uh, you doing visuals for the show. I'm like, really? That's He's like, awesome. yeah, man. I'm like, dude, I'm not uh, an animator. Like I did this as, as a, like just for fun. And he's like, fuck it. Like if you can do this, but like longer and with the, with the topic that I'm giving you, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm like, all right. So I actually like partnered up with a friend and we did like five clips of animation, like full animation in like, I don't know, like a month maybe. And he's one of the, like the best jobs that I had. Like the guy, the DJ, he, his name is Puppet. I don't know if you have heard of it. He's, he's been in the Seven Lions, yeah. uh, remix album. Yeah. 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 So he, we did the visuals for him with a friend. Uh, he works in Ubisoft as well. Um, his name is Oscar Mar. He's a, like a motion graphic. He's a graphic designer. He's, he's, he's awesome. He's really, really good. So we did that for him and it's been one of the best jobs that I have. Like for real, it's like, it's just fun. It's fresh. It's new. I have, I've never done that before. And there you go. Like I, I make money having fun and the end result was like really, really awesome. I'm, I'm really proud of it. Yeah. And another really important lesson from that, that story is, is to, to say yes to things, you know, even if you're not an expert at, at something, if somebody digs what you do to kind of have the confidence in yourself, if they're asking you to, to do something or to kind of push it further, to, to push it further and to, to try it. Oh yeah. And, and that's the thing is like a bunch of people say like, 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 it's saying yes to everything, but you also have to learn to say no, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. if I'm saying, I remember who told me that. Like, I, I know that an artist told me this, but it's like, every time that you say no, you're saying yes to something else. Don't think about no. I was like, no, I'm just closing this door. It's like, every time that you say no, you're saying yes to another client or, or you're saying yes to uh, your personal project, which, mm-hmm. and then you have to like, think about what's going to be better. So at some point you have to like, okay, like if you have like a really good opportunity to, to do a job and you're not sure, just think about it. You'll be like, okay, like just do like, like constant process. So it's like, okay, if I do this job, I'm going to get a bunch of money, but the end result, I know it already is going to be like a really shitty, you know, like images or whatever you're going to do. But if I use that time doing my own personal work, I know that I can get better jobs through that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you have to like, you have to put everything in a balance and see what's better for you. But like for sure, like learn to say yes, but also like be careful saying yes to everything, you know? Yeah. I like that idea of, of when you say no, that you're yeah. saying yes to something else, but it's really important to make sure that you're not saying yes to like sitting around all day watching TV and not pursuing your personal work. Like you said, to put that time to, to good use towards your, your artistic uh, endeavors. Oh dude, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy balance because like, to be honest with you, I used to be like, again, like, like that fucking attitude that, that you t- that you say that I have like through all my <laughs> yeah. stories. It's true, man. Like, like for example, yeah. like, like all my life, I barely finished high school. I dropped out of, uh, university. I quit my first job. Like if, like I've, I've been, I've been really like, like how you say, I'm, I've been like a princess, dude. Like, like if I don't like anything, <laughs> if I don't like something, I'm like, okay, fuck it. Next, whatever. Right. But then you have to be careful with that. Like, that's the thing is like, you have to think about it. And every, I never take a decision without thinking what's going to be best for me, you know? Right. Yeah. There's two different forms of fuck it. There's like, fuck it. I'm not going to do this. Like, cause I'm scared. I'm not going to do this because I'm too lazy. And then there's like, fuck it. I'm going to do it in spite of those things. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. 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 And, the, and that's the thing is like, it's, it's, it becomes like, like, it becomes like a weird balance because I can, compl- like, if I'm, I'm very passionate about the stuff that I do and I, I really don't, I give a fuck if I don't care about something like you, like if I like something, you see me like super interested and like I put my time in and everything. But if I really don't care about something, I'm blind. I'm, I'm like the worst man, like the worst. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing is like, I, I think, I think there's like a weird, like a, like a mid gray area in between those like two extremes. Because you can be, you can be like a, like a very like laid back dude right now. If you're young, you, you're probably going to be in college. You're just like your, your parents are paying like um, huge amounts of money for you to go to school. And then that's what, that's what I used to do, man. Like, like my, my mom and my dad were paying like crazy money for me to go to school. And I was just like, 
like the first two years, I was just drinking beer every day for real, mm-hmm. and like meeting like meeting girls, meeting girls, and and drinking beer. And then at some point, it's like, dude, like, okay, what the fuck? That you have, I actually have to do something. And then I found what I what I love to do, and I was like, okay, I need to do this. I love doing this kind of art. I need to do it. And then I became obsessed, dude. Like, like nobody had to tell me anything. I just became obsessed with it. And that's the mm-hmm. point where you you also have to be careful because like I remember when I used to be when I used to be younger, I can paint like twelve hours straight. I remember like there were nights that I used to go like I just sit down and just start painting and then the next thing I know, like this the sun is going up and I was like, Whoa, like I've been painting the whole night and I didn't even realize it. But then you have to be careful because like now I, I cannot do that now. Like I love painting, but like I'm older now, so like there's like different priorities. I have my energy levels are different. Uh, you know, like, like life changed, you know? So there's like a, like, there's, there's like a gray area in between, like a, like a balance in between those extremes that I think is like a very healthy place to be, you know? Yeah. And well, kind of speaking of that, do you have a formula for balancing your time between your professional work and your, and your personal work and your freelance stuff? Oh man, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm way better yeah. now because, but it, it, I think it was, it was mainly because I, I was used to, like when, before I moved back, to, uh, I, I moved to Toronto. I used to have my own time. I, I was freelancing, uh, and I, I used to have I used to have my own schedule. And I, I used to work. I used to go out all day and like I don't know have a beer with friends and stuff. And then I used to come back at night and I used to work until like I don't know like four in the morning, you know. But then and I used to do that like for I don't know for for since for like two years something like that. But then when I moved to Toronto, I you know it's like a nine to five job. And then I was like, uh, for the first year and a half, I was like really struggling with it. I was like trying to like go to work. And then I used to go to go home and I work until like, like I, I was doing the same thing that I was doing here. I, was, I used to go to work and then go to ho- go, go home and work until like two in the morning. And then I did that for like a couple of months until my body was like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, like what the fuck are you doing? And then my work, I, like I wasn't doing such a great job at the office and I was, I wasn't doing such a great job at home, you know, like I was like, this, this, that makes no, no fucking sense to me. So I started trying stuff like waking up super early in the morning and kind of like do my own stuff before I go to work. And it kind of works, but I'm still struggling with it. Like, like to be honest with you, that's why I tried to do like simple stuff, you know, like for example, like I think also coming back to the style thing, I think, also, the style that I have right now is because it fits perfect with the time frame that I have, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I cannot, I cannot post like a full blown painting every day. It's ridiculous. So that's why I started doing more sketches, like black and white sketches, for example, because it's, it's easier for me and it takes less time and I, I, I can actually like sit down comfortably and draw for like an hour or two hours instead of like six hours, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I think I think I think I'm still struggling with it, but I think there's there's good practices. Uh, um, uh, I remember there's a couple of books that I, I I try to read, like the you know like the World of Art, and there's a really good one. Uh, it's called Manage Your Day Today, and is is they have like really good tips, but I think I think sometimes it can be is is very subjective, you know. And like all I can tell you is is my own personal stuff that works for me, and I'm still experimenting with stuff you know it's like is for me it's like trial and error like i wake up early in the morning how do i feel that day good it, it worked for me okay cool i'm gonna keep doing it i do lists i do a bunch of lists so it's like i'm working on a painting i do even lists for painting so it's like i'm working on a book cover and then I'm, I'm working at night and then uh i cannot go to bed if i if i don't actually like in my head or in a piece of paper I write down what I have to do to the image the next day. So that, that kind of helps me too. But I think, you know, like the best practice that I'm actually like doing right now is, is setting small goals. Cause before I used to do, I, I used to just go home. I used to just go home and just paint just for the sake of like, like keeping myself relevant just to, just to paint something because like I need to post on Facebook right? or I need to post on Instagram because if you don't post in a year in Facebook or on Facebook, most likely the algorithm in Facebook is, is, is going to be like, it's not going to show you to the same amount of people as somebody that posts every day just because they're super active, you know? Mm. And the same with people, like people love when, when people are like 
uh, like consistent with their work because they know that this guy posts every Tuesday. So every Tuesday there, they can wait to see the image or every day. So they go to his account every day and then it, it generates more traffic, you know? So I used to just paint just for the sake of that. And at some point I was like, like, I can't do it. Like I actually, I, I can't do it. Like I don't have time for that. Uh, that's why I, 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 I started setting goals for myself. So I was like, okay, I'm going to post, um, uh, every two days and, uh, my next goal is going to be, I'm going to make a book. So right now that's what I'm doing right now. I'm actually like, I compiled a bunch of like the, the Inktober drawings from last year and I'm making a book. So at the end, at the end of the month, I have my 34, like my 31 drawings. And then in, in a month or two, I have like a physical book that I can actually like sell or give away or whatever, you know? But it's something that I can actually like, like you can actually like measure it, you know? It's like, okay, I have a book now. I'm going to make, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, the, there's a bunch of people doing like, like 30, like one drawing a day. So it's like, okay, at the end of the year, I have something to show or I can do a book with all the, the 300 and something drawings, you know? Right. So I think it's, it's good to have that. Yeah. It's really important to have those goals and, to make them achievable, maybe make them challenging, but to make them certainly achievable so you don't get too discouraged. But yeah, the, the consistency is key. And also if you're promising something to, to live up to that promise, even if that promise is to yourself that you're going to do a drawing a day, a drawing a week, whatever it is to, to adhere to that. Oh yeah, dude. And like, and like just now, because I did it so many times, like remember like I used to have like plans like, oh yeah, I'm going to make a sketchbook. Like I've been trying to make a sketchbook for like two years. Mm -hmm. And then this is like the first time that I was like, okay, like this is ridiculous. Like, fuck it. Like I'm actually going to put it together. And if like, if people buy it, sick. If people don't buy it, I mean, whatever, I'm going to give it away to like my friends and like my art directors and you know, like my clients just to say thank you, you know? Right. Love it. Uh, so at at least like, like for me, even like, I just, I just see like that for, for example, like with a book or if you do uh, a calendar or if you do prints or whatever it is, you 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 spend money on it, but at the same time, it's like you're probably gonna sell a few. But if you if you if you sell none, you can still like like for example, like I was thinking I was thinking that I was like fuck, like I just spent a bunch of money printing these books because I actually got like a really good printer. Uh, I want like a really like good product, you know. And I was like, what happens if nobody buys the book? I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna say thanks to my clients because they actually like allow me to work in like really good stuff. So I'm just going to give them one to them just as a thank you. Like, Jeff, hey, Jeff, there you go. Here's a sketchbook. Why? For no reason. Just say thank you, man. Yeah, because your art is a gift. Awesome, man. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's it's time for the final push. Let's do it, man. Uh, and this is where I ask you to, to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today uh, and just give them your your best words of advice and really push them to pursue their creative passions. The be- okay, the best advice that I can give people, I have, I have like two kinds of advice. I think if you are a, a student right now and you're in, in high school or in college, you are the luckiest person in the world because you have so much time. Like when you're in high school and, or you're in college, you think that you don't have time and you're like, you have to go to class and you have to do this and that or you go out with friends and you have beers. But Trust me, you don't have to pay much bills. You're probably still living at home with your parents. So you have like that your financial situation is like, it's perfect right now. You don't have that worry in your life right now. So just take the time and work on yourself. Be true to yourself. That because that, that's the other thing is like, I, I, I was guilty of that before. Like I, I used to like copy a bunch of people and that's good because you learn a bunch, a bunch from it. But at the same time, if you copy not the technique and if you if, if you just copy everything that somebody does, like you just paint what they paint. So if the guy paints, I don't know, soldiers, you're gonna paint soldiers. It's like cool because you're learning, but at the same time you you're not actually like making like a conscious decision of uh painting the soldier because you want to paint the soldier. You just paint it because somebody else painted it. So I I think that's like a, a thing that I would like to encourage people right now and is Take a second and actually like be honest with like what inspires you, uh, what gets you like painting and drawing in the first place. You know, it's like actually like like kind of like filter all your influences and like your thoughts and like the way how you see life and everything in the art. Because to to be honest with me, that's the kind of stuff that I think is kind of like the future of art. You know, because like there's so many like tutorials and there's so many like techniques and like people is sharing stuff and there's schools. And there's videos and there's everything that you can, you can learn how to do anything pretty much. But 
there's no way that I can learn how to think like you. Or there's no way that a guy who grew up in Canada uh, understand my my life. Like I grew up in Colombia, you know, like even even where I work right now, everybody's like, oh, dude, how was growing up in Colombia? Like, like, what's it safe? What? I was like, yeah, dude, it was like, like, like the best time of my life. You know, <laughs> it's like, so like, yeah, actually like the thing that I think that feels just in, in your stuff, like in your art and in your, actually like in everything in life is, is how you, how you grow up, how you see life, how you treat people, how you all that kind of stuff, you know? So I think it's like, it's, it's like being like really honest with yourself and like sitting down, taking the time and actually like just doing what you want to do as opposed to, uh, doing what people expect you to do. I think that's like the, the best piece of advice. And if you're not a student, if you're like, uh, like already in the industry and everything, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can give you the same advice that you can give me. Like, I'm still sure that we'll figure out how to do stuff. Like, and that's the thing is like, it depends on the priorities, you know, like my, my, there's people who have like families, they have kids, they have whatever, like it depends. But I think like a, a really good advice is just like, Taking it, taking it. If you have energy, taking the time to get the work done, uh, because for sure you're not gonna be able to do it all the time. Like as as you grow older, your priorities change, your health change, like everything changes. So you kind of have to like like use all the energy that you have doing what you wanna do right when you have it. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Give what you can give and, uh, figure out your, your own kind of path and your own, own style as you go uh, yeah, with absolutely. that time and energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Victor, man, thank you so much for, for coming on the show today and for giving us that push, man. No, dude, thank you for having me. Sorry. Sorry for the, for the accent, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. No, you're great. No worries. Oh, that's awesome, man. Uh, you can find Victor on his website, which is, uh, victormascara.com. Uh, that's V I C T O R. M O S Q U E R A uh, dot com on Instagram and Tumblr. He is uh, Victor Muscara, and you can find everything we talked about today at yourcreativepush.com slash Victor. Victor, thanks again, man. Thank you for having me, man. That's awesome. Um, I thank you to Victor again for coming on the show. I love this idea that he mentioned of, of needing your personal work as a, as a way to detox. And I think so often with our busy lives, we have this kind of um, panicked mindset when we think about our creative passion. It's this this thing that we, we need to get to. It's like another job. And I know I'm definitely guilty of, of pushing this mindset on the show sometimes, too, by uh, guilting you all to, to get to your creative passion no matter what, no matter how busy your life is, no matter uh, what kind of job you have that, that takes up all of your time, all of your responsibilities to your kids, to your family, to your uh, loved ones. I understand that life gets in the way and life is very, very busy and time is short um, and that I do. Uh, the whole point of this podcast is to to do the work anyway, to, to get that small amount of time that you can carve out um, to get to your creative passion. And it can feel like this kind of a this job, this other thing that you have to do, this other almost responsibility that you have to do. But it is so important to have that drive, um, to carve out the time and there to end at the carving out of the time and just getting your ass in the chair and then taking a deep breath and just relaxing and enjoying, uh, the time that you did make for yourself. It's relaxing, uh, while you are with your passion and treating it, uh, like Victor said, like a detox using that time to, to really unwind and to get all of those thoughts out with your art. It's so important to not look at the actual process of, of doing your creative passion as this job, because as soon as it starts feeling like a job, it gets icky. And then there's really no point to, to doing it anyway. So it's really important. And I really want you to think about um, when you're going into your creative passion today, tomorrow, this weekend, to really treat it like a detox, to treat it like a therapeutic event rather than this thing that you have to get done. And of course, I couldn't let you go without reminding you of the fuck it mentality. I know we said it a lot on this episode. I'm sorry if your ears are bleeding, but it is a really good mentality to have in, in many different aspects, especially when you are inundated with all of those different resistances that are in your head. All of the people that are telling you not to do it, to get a real job, to not waste your time doing it, just say fuck it and just do it anyway. And then, of course, when you're sitting down to do it and you're thinking about your audience, you're thinking about all the things that people are going to say about um, what you're doing, whether it's an out there type of thing, uh, whether you're worried about what people will think, again, fuck it, whatever. 
screw them. <laughs> just, just do it for yourself. Get what's in your head out onto the paper, into the, the writing, onto the song, whatever it is. Uh, just, just get it out of you and, and into the world in the most genuine way that you can to try to do it exactly as you see it in your head and then worry about all that other stuff later. And even later, just say, fuck it, whatever. But make sure uh, the fuck it is a powerful tool. So make sure you're always using it in its positive form and never saying, fuck it, I quit. Never say it like that. That is definitely the worst of all possible definitions of those two words. Um, But that is all I've got for you today. Hopefully you're inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. And we will see you on Monday. If you need the push again, have a wonderful, productive weekend. Get some amazing work done. I love you all. And we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.